We are live. It's Alien Day, and we're live. At least I hope we are. I can always check on that. It's actually been quite some time since I've last done a, done a live stream on the channel. And as we get further into this, I'm sure it'll become apparent <laughs> as to why why that is. But um, of course it's Alien Day. Happy Alien Day, everybody. The most wonderful time of year. 426. The time we all come together as alien fans to celebrate. And we already have some people in here. Sonic Ninja 3434. XXX fan, alien fan lover, 2004 XXX. Michael Sean. Thunder, Thunder Tazzy. Playing Alien Isolation. Right now. Oh, and I did mention you, so there you go. The Numeran, Raccoon, World Industry Snowboarding, Brennan Walden, Big Ron, Watchtower Studios, Ogre Squasher 101, Abdullah Ibn Lib <laughs> Steve, Billy, Joe, Louise, Brandt, Space T Texan, Space Texan. Lots of folks coming in to celebrate Alien Day, I hope. Uh, it's been kind of a, a slow Alien Day. I guess. Uh, not a huge milestone of Alien Days. Uh, and I'll tell you right now, I'll, I'll warn you right ahead, this is a, it's kind of an impromptu stream, and nothing really is prepared, so this is kind of just off-the-cuff kind of stuff. So it's not uh, in, in fitting with the occasion, I suppose. It's not too uh, extravagant or anything like that. But I wanted to celebrate, of course. Um, this is, I believe it's the fifth official, official Alien Day. Uh, it first started uh, to coincide with the release, uh, or with the uh, anniversary of Aliens, the 30th anniversary, and now we're on the 35th anniversary, so how time flies. And you'll notice that these Alien Days, they, they, they kind of get less and less of a, a big deal, I guess. Um, with that first Alien Day, it was, it was quite incredible. We had the celebration of the 30th anniversary, of course, and we also had uh, the very first um, audio drama, The Out of the Shadows, which would kind of become, at least for the first few years, it would become a tradition to to release these. So we had Out, Out of the Shadows, we had uh, uh, River of Pain, Sea of Sorrows, all, all releasing on Alien Day. And then when the Alien 3 audio drama came out, it didn't come out on Alien Day, but it was announced on Alien Day. So we do have some announcements, some reveals, things like that. We did have uh, some cover art revealed. I believe they uh, revealed for the first time the, the cover art for the, the first draft William Gibson screenplay for Alien 3. They, they released the cover art for that for the, uh, for the novelization version of that, which I'm, I'm really excited about. That's written by uh, Pat Cadigan, who's a Hugo Award winner. He's very well known. Uh, he's definitely the guy to do it. Uh, and it being the first draft, uh, it will likely be different than what we've seen in the audio drama versions and, and in the comic versions from Dark Horse. Uh, so th that one's a slight bit different. I think that one uh, we'll have some surprises uh, for those who have already experienced those two other versions of the Gibson Alien 3. So that's going to be very exciting. Uh, also, uh, cover art revealed for the uh, the Aliens art book. So they uh, had some uh, good success with the uh, 40 Years, 40 Artists uh, from Titan Books, which was great. Uh, I love that, so I'm so happy that they're doing uh, uh, one for Aliens, right? I don't know if we'll get one for Alien 3, but that'd be nice. But uh, if, if you've seen the cover, they've, they've revealed that on, on social media, and, and that's just absolutely great. Um, I do see some chats coming. It's, sorry, I've been uh, kind of uh, rambling a little bit, but let's see. Uh, Michael Sean asks, are you excited for Aliens Fire Team? Absolutely. Anyone ask, ever mistake you for a man? Vasquez, Space Texan. No, oh, that's, have you ever been mistaken for a man? And she says, no, have you? Um, 42nd Street, Matthew writes, 
I'm looking forward to reading the novelization. I think Fox made the right decision in the story they made because it's not the best, but I think the novel will do a good job fleshing it out. I agree with that. Uh, I think maybe maybe a novel version at this point is the best way to go, since we already have uh, had the other versions in comics. Uh, Ganya, Ganija, will you stream Aliens Fireteam when it release? And we have, uh, it looks like, some blue chat. I don't, I don't uh, stream too much, but if that's something special, thank you very much. Uh, I would love to. I would love to stream Aliens Fire Team when it comes out. Uh, something I was mentioning, and, and another thing that's, if, if you want to check out some fun stuff for Alien Day, I, I did a, a podcast with Aliens Bad Company, the podcast uh, with uh, uh, Catherine and Danelle Douglas. Uh, their, their new Alien Day episode is out today, uh, so I talked to them, uh, and that was a lot of fun. We, we covered a lot of things. One of the things I talked about was back in the day, back in... Uh, 99 2000 or so on my pc the alien versus predator game which was amazing and uh, evangelist soap soap Mina says i got money which is awesome keep it coming guys no thank you very much uh ganija thank you um i had so much fun in those days because that was really like the first time that i ever kind of experienced like playing a multiplayer online game and for it to be the alien versus predator themed game as well that was so amazing and and you want to recapture that magic a little bit and, and they kind of struck lightning twice with uh alien versus predator 2 which came out mm, two or three years later that was fun as well maybe even the multiplayer for that was even more fun um but then something comes along like the 2010 alien versus predator it didn't feel to me like they recaptured the magic in the same kind of way so i don't know what fire team could do differently i don't know you know if, if this format of you know the three players on a, on a team strictly fighting against you know more snow predators which <laughs> the predators were always the noobs right guys uh no aliens so it's strictly marines fighting uh aliens uh, that could be very interesting to see and I think that's something worthwhile to play in a, a multiplayer focused kind of game. So absolutely, I, I would love to stream it. Maybe we'll see how this stream goes, uh, if, if it's, you know, uh, tolerable enough. Um, so we'll see. But abs absolutely. Um, Free Minded says, I'm not hyped for the new Alien game. It looks like a pasted project from... Dead Space. Yeah, I keep hearing it It's it seems like Dead Space, but I've never played that, so I'm not too sure. Uh, it will be boring in a month. <laughs> hope I'm wrong, but I'm not. Well, I hope you're wrong, too. Uh, the board game from Gale Force 9 is also quite awesome, says Mike Dodd. Uh, then Alien 3 with Prisoners using Wit to Kill an Alien, says Thunder Tazzy 412. I'd love that. I'd love, like, you know, maybe like an Alien Isolation type game, but in the vein of Alien 3, right? Where you're, you're a prisoner on Fury. I think that'd be kind of cool, actually. Um, no weapons, just, yeah, using your... using your wits, using your cunning to try try to escape that that awful, evil runner alien. I think that could be very, very interesting. But uh, who knows? Who knows if they'll ever do that? But, I mean, I do hope for uh, Fire Team uh, not just to be good on, you know, whatever terms that I arbitrarily just kind of set out as an alien fan that it satisfies as an alien fan but i hope it's 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 that and i hope it's successful uh that, that people uh kind of seek it out and more people play because maybe that was kind of the problem with the 2010 alien versus predator like yeah it was kind of boring within a month because it, it was a pain in the ass to find you know enough players to to, to all get in so, there's that. And, yeah, uh, Van Wolfster says Alien 2000, unless she plays an alien xenomorph. Uh, absolutely. That was an amazing thing. I, I preferred, actually, in that game, uh, as, as well as the Alien vs. Predator 2 game, I kind of preferred playing as, as the xenomorph. I thought it was, I thought it was pretty fun. Especially the, the second game. It had that pounce feature where you just go, you know, just let loose on, on an enemy. Uh, the legendary Tim says, finally made it to a live one. 
yeah, uh, when I when I do one maybe once a year, uh, that's something. But uh, you know, maybe live isn't my forte. It's it's a little bit different. Like I said, it, this isn't uh, uh, nothing specifically prepared for this. Uh, nothing you know scripted or or, or anything especially you know, constructed or, or, or put together, but, uh, you know, just hanging out, having fun and celebrating this Alien Day. Uh, I wanted to know if anybody who's who's watching right now, have you been watching Alien movies today, or do you plan to, depending on uh, your time zone, uh, where you are, because I think you should at least get one in, right? Uh, it'd be great to have a full-on marathon, but, you know, sometimes time may not permit to... To, to fit them all in. I, I'm hoping to watch at least one. I'm, I'm gonna watch, I'm gonna decide which alien movie I wanna watch after after I'm uh, done this stream. Uh, this is cool, I hope that you do more Alien Theory. This is uh, James Graves. Hey, Project Acheron is here. Have you seen the new screenshots from Alien Fireteam? Oh, there's new uh, screenshots, that I didn't know. Vangelis says, don't we get to see the face behind the mysterious sexy voice? Uh, my face is out there, it's, it's, it's around. Um, I think you can see it in, uh, oh, actually, the, the Alien uh, Day documentary of sorts that I did, um, 2017, I believe. So I took, that was a huge special project. Uh, that was uh, taking uh, clips, uh, self-made interviews from Alien fans all around the world, uh, talking about certain uh, aspects of the Alien movies, you know, like, what, what do they remember from first seeing the movies? What are their favorite characters? Th things like that. Uh, I was in that. I, I appear there. Uh, Matthew Klasik says, Look up, hi, this is Derek237. You're welcome. Yes, that's that's my other channel where you do indeed see my face. Not so much anymore, um, but it's it's out there. Ganija says, You should do a face cam videos. You look handsome. Uh, thank you. I didn't. I guess we're related. You're giving me money and... and <laughs> You're complimenting me, so I think maybe we're cousins, and, and I don't know know it, <laughs> but uh, thank you. Um, I don't know. Uh, face face in, in the videos, I, I don't think it would work for the videos that I do. Maybe uh, a live stream such as this one, but for now, as, as you can see, I just have kind of the, the clips, and I think that's kind of nice. I, I like kind of just looking at all the different clips. I, I did, you know, edit these together, and... and uh, made this little kind of montage on, on the three screens there. Um, have you read any of the Hellraiser comics? asked Aiden Bennett. No, I have not. Um, those could be interesting. I like the Hellraiser movies. I think they're uh, quite interesting. I would get to see a headroom much like the Forum Covenant in the new screenshots for Fireteam. This is Project Acheron. Were these just released today? They must have been because I swear I would have seen them. Damage Case asks, did you ever see the alien encounter at Disney World? Uh, not in person, not up close, but I have seen footage of it. It's it's quite cool, actually. Uh, I don't know if I saw it in footage. Or, uh, I think someone sent it to me. It was pretty cool. James Graves, uh, what are your thoughts on Alien Isolation? I think it's fantastic. I'm not particularly great at the game. <laughs> but... Uh, uh, you know, just story-wise, I think it's it's absolutely, you know, it, it hits all bases. Um, Lulina Morgan says, Phalanx, I think, is probably my favorite alien book, but I'm also really biased because I love Sigler's other stuff. Oh, so we have a Sigler fan in the room right now. Yeah, uh, Sigler's, you know, he's, he must be an alien himself. Uh, the the work that he gets out and, and of you know the the speed and quality it's it's you know Stephen King level of talent so I mean I I, I forget what they call them so sig heads something like that but uh, very devoted fan base and, and very rightfully so and he does uh, live streams and shows off his face <laughs> quite a bit uh, I can't wait for Alien issue two from Marvel oh, yeah that's something to talk. Uh, theory, what do you think of the novelizations of the movies? Says Joshua Cameron. Uh, I love them. I think they're they're great all on their own as books. Uh, particularly, obviously, the, the first three from Alan Dean Foster, uh, who, who is an incredible writer, and he brought uh, 
a true dimension uh, to, to the stories. And, and I'd give A.C. Crispin credit as well. Uh, Matthew Klazik asks, have they ever released a novelization of Prometheus? Yes, they have, uh, but only in Japan, apparently. Uh, Sigler fans are called junkies. Okay, the junkies. Watch out for the junkies. Um, yeah, only a Japanese uh, Prometheus novelization. I believe Studio Yutani, uh, Clara. Hi, Clara. Uh, there was a big project to translate it from the original Japanese, and, and I believe it's uh, uh, available uh, through their uh, the, the Patreon, actually. I believe. Alien Theory, you should definitely do a stream with the critical drinker. He loves Alien. Well, if he loves Alien, then he's got great taste. And that would be good, <laughs> good to do, I guess. Uh, if you love Alien as much as I do, say, yeah, yeah, says the big one. Do you like the Alien 3 audiobook or the final cut of the movie better? Asks Michael Sean. Um, the audiobook as in uh, the, the Gibson version? Uh, I, I'd say, even with how well uh, the, the Gibson adaptation turned out in, in its form of the audiobook and in the form of the comic book, uh, which I love, and in, in a way I consider it canon, uh, peripherally canon, I guess you could call it, in, in some ways, because a lot of, you know, the, the UPP stuff and, and the, the Anchor Point station that kind of made its way into the extended universe, but I love Alien 3. I love the theatrical version. I love the director's cut. I love David Fincher. Uh, shout out to David Fincher. Uh, who I watched the Academy Awards last night, and, and uh, it was sad to see him lose once again uh, in the Best Director category. Uh, Mank was his film. I thought that was a great film, and reunited him with uh, Charles Dance, actually, which is kind of funny. Uh, I wonder if they shared Alien 3 memories um, together. Uh, but he lost the Academy Award, uh, unfortunately. But his day will come. His day will come. David Navarro says, Hello, Alien Theory. So glad to see you alive from you. Uh, recently, I read online the original 1976 screenplay of Alien. The skeleton of the story was already fleshed out. Yeah, it was there. I mean, we had uh, Dan O'Bannon, Ronald Chassette, uh, before uh, Guyler uh, kind of came in. Uh, took some, let's say, 75% of, of that script and kind of tuned it to make it, I don't know, just a, a little bit more, I don't know, modern, I guess you could say, more accessible. Uh, Stephen Otten says, with a, a super chat, thank you for the super chat, happy 426. Have you read the new comic, What You Think? You should absolutely do live stream with Critical Drinker. It would be epic. Stay frosty. So does Critical Drinker drink while he live streams? Because that, that could get messy. Um, but uh, yes, I did uh, read the second issue of uh, the comic. Um, I, I did kind of a full-out review of the first issue. Uh and within that review, I mentioned that I probably wasn't going to do, uh, you know, uh, uh, an issue by issue review of, of them all, which I think is probably the right call because uh, I, I enjoyed the second issue just fine. But, you know, I don't know if there's too much to go into. I, I think when all is said and done with, with the, the story as a whole, the arc as a whole, uh, that Philip Kennedy Johnson has has written, I think that will be the best time to to really assess it, to really get a a better idea of how the story has kind of come together, basically. So right now it's it's breadcrumbs, right? So this is definitely a breadcrumb issue uh, where we do have the follow up to what what has been established. So we had the first issue with Gabriel Cruz. We learn about him. We learn about his son. And getting on to uh, Epsilon Station and uh, getting into some trouble there. Uh, really, the, the second issue is just uh, Gabriel discovering that, uh, getting uh, back to Epsilon Station's mission there with two, two uh, other Marines. And we get some little hints of, of, other, of the, uh, other things that um, actually were kind of reminiscent of the Earth War storyline. Like, you know, we had the old man and, and the uh, adorable little girl who's, like, scared out of her wits and things like that. Um, 
and a little bit more, which I guess it's it's probably related a little bit more of uh, Cruz's backstory and uh, really, I mean, not not to give too many spoilers. Basically, they're kind of just searching around the station at the very very end of, of the issue. We encounter an alien, so uh, the the next issue is sure to sure to bring some consequence. And I know uh, Johnson has mentioned on his Twitter, he, he sent out a tweet, I think a week or two ago, saying the fifth issue is going to be uh, really heavy, I guess. It's going to have something that's really going to uh, upset some people, I guess. Um, so that'll be something to look forward to. Uh, so maybe intermittently, like, I don't know, every other issue maybe I should do. Uh, and Darth Bane, thank you very much for uh, the super chat. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Darth Bane. I appreciate it. Um, Rico Diaz says, even though I love the Alien series, I never knew why uh, Wheeling Yuchani never just sent a bunch of synthetics to capture a xenomorph. Just capturing an egg would have sufficed, or have I missed something? Ah, well, I mean, you know, they're expensive, those, those synths, so, you know, humans are, are less cost-effective. Uh, David Navarro says, I remember when Aliens was shown on French, channel TF1, years ago, it was showed the deleted scenes where Ripley and Cutter Dallas Cocoon, which wasn't in the DVD version I rented before. Uh, yeah, uh, a lot of TV versions, they they have some revelations uh, that's, that we don't quite see. I think the very first time anyone saw the deleted scenes from Aliens was a, a television broadcast before uh, the special edition was released in 1990. It was, I think... I think it was that same year, but it was an ABC broadcast, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Owned by Disney. How ironic. Um, yeah. Um, uh, Walt Nassis says, uh, Alien Theory, did you ever go to Disney World or the Great American Movie Ride was running? Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I believe that's the same uh, thing I was talking about earlier. No, I have not, but I've seen footage of it, and it was pretty cool. Yeah, like kind of like a, a model life-size Ripley and some you know chains dangling, and a, and a xenomorph, of course, all that cool, cool stuff. Um, Chris22, I thought the thumbnail said illegal alien and jumped in. Uh, hi from the Emerald Isle. Hi. Hi, Chris. Nice to have you here. Happy Alien Day. Happy Alien Day to everyone uh, just joining now. A great day for alien lovers. So, uh, Again, I mean, it's it wasn't the hugest day, but we got some cool announcements. We got uh, the cover art reveals of books, and we got... Um, uh, different like merchandise uh, being revealed um, tech 49 super chat can I finish my coffee first it's the only good thing on the ship in the words of the immortal Parker who's, who's played by the great Yafet Kato dearly missed great actor great character and a good cup of coffee Gita asks, what's with the glowing Zeno in the in the Aftermath comic? Yeah, I, I saw that too. So that's another thing to look forward to, um, though it's not being released on Alien Day. I guess it's being released, uh, I don't know if they have a date yet, but I would imagine it's July, since that would be coinciding with, with uh, the anniversary of Aliens. Um, your guess is as good as mine at this point. Maybe it is, <laughs> you know... Uh, uh, a Chernobyl alien of some kind is glowing radioactive, uh, although maybe it's more symbolic, I guess, like a ghost alien. A lot of people are calling it that, the ghost alien, um, the ghost of alien past. Art Trooper 47 says, love your videos. Thanks so much. Thank you, Art Trooper 47. I really appreciate it. I love your support. Uh, love Alien. Love Alien Day. Love that you're all here. That's great. Amazing channel theory, the voice is telling you, you're a great emissary for the alien fan base. I absolutely appreciate that. Spitfire Mark 1A. When I was, I was 12 when Alien was released in England in 79. Read lots about it in Starlog, oh, uh, uh, legendary publication. My mom got it for me on VHS when it came out a couple of years later. Scared the hell out of me. Well, if it was only a couple of years later, you'd still be, still be in your mid-teens, I suppose. So it's, it's a little too scary. For, for some of that is they're rated R for a reason, you know. No, nah, only kidding. Um, Gregory McAdams says, "Do you wish they would have kept Ripley's chestburster scene at the end of Alien Three in the assembly cut? I think they should have kept it." Yes, absolutely. Uh, as much as I love the assembly cut, because there are a lot of people who say the assembly cut is the the superior version of Alien Three, uh, I'm almost inclined to agree with that, but. 
there are little things that, that I would change. I mean, there, there are some things that, you know, obviously with the whole subplot with Gallic kind of getting, getting loose and freeing the alien, I love that. Um, and Southie 98 says, after Dorian Duncan was a letdown as a villain. Uh, I, I don't quite agree with that. Uh, I would say Duncan was, was formidable. I, I like Duncan quite a bit, actually. Um, but uh, still, Dorian, I think, will kind of be the, the knee-jerk response for kind of villains in these series. Um, but... Uh, as, as far as the uh, assembly code goes, uh, for Alien 3, um, little things here and there, and I, I do absolutely wish that they would have kept the chest bursting in. Uh, also, I kind of prefer uh, Spikey being, you know, the victim of, of the chest burster. Uh, that, I think, works a little bit better than, than the ox, babe. I think... Just for me personally, I think that's it's a better kind of scene, and better to call it the dog alien than the ox alien, I guess. Uh, Billy Charter says hi, Alien Theory. Love the content. Keep it up. Thank you very much. Rocky Manuel Martinez says awesome videos, especially the comics. Ben Chiavipe, um, Damage Case. I'd like to the Yacha visit the alien homeworld. Yeah, I'd like to see something like that. The Rage War in a TV series would be awesome, says Mike Jolin. The big one says, what's the most dangerous alien? The snake alien? That's creepy. Severe outcome. Tonight, I'm celebrating Alien Day by streaming the Alien Arcade game along with Capcom's AVP game. Now, that's, that's, that's the way to do it. Walt Nassa says, I actually did ride the Great American Movie Ride three times whenever I went to Disney World. And when I saw the alien, it scared me the first time. I bet it would have. I, and it would have scared me, too, if I actually went there. Because I remember maybe it, it was a little bit before my time or maybe even a little bit after my time. But I did go to Disneyland to uh, Universal Studios as well uh, when I was, I don't know, six, maybe. And this would have been 93 or so. 93, 94. They had the Jaws ride, and they had the King Kong ride at that time. Uh, both of those <laughs> traumatized me, absolutely traumatized me. Uh, I thought basically the shark was real, even though, you know, at six years old, you should probably know better. But, you know, the, the, the effects were good. What can I say? Lance good thrust. <laughs> Lance good thrust. Uh, says, will the FX series be good? I hope so. We don't know. To see, that was another thing I was, I was hoping um, that we might see. Maybe just like a little bit of a teaser trailer of some kind. Even if it was just like text or something like that. Um, but no such luck. But the day's still still not over, so you never know. Um, but uh, yes, Lance good thrust. I, I, I hope we, uh, I hope it will be good. Name the Gamer says, question, have you ever played the new Alien role-playing game? Happy Alien Day, your videos are awesome. Uh, I haven't played it, but I own the, the book, um, which is incredible. Great art, great detail, uh, such uh, incredible, incredible world-building that it does and how it incorporates so much of Extended Universe stuff, stuff that we've seen in the movies. Um, so to, to just read it on its own is kind of a, a great experience, but no, I haven't played it. I, I'm not too good with RPGs. I've never really gotten the hang of it. It's it's hard for me to, I don't know, uh, get the grasp of them, I guess. Time Bomb 93 says, Happy Alien Day. What's the one thing you'd love to see in a new alien film? Your holy grail moment, as it were. Oh, God, that's a tough one. Uh, I don't know. I, I would just honestly, at this point, I'd really want to see if, if they could make an alien movie scary. The first movie was really the only one that's genuinely scary. Though, I, I mean, credit to Aliens, it's, it has scary moments, uh, it's thrilling, but I, I, I want that feeling of dread that Alien so perfectly gave us. So maybe they'd have to just, you know, revert back to the concept of one alien. Maybe they could do that. Maybe they could get, you know, some 
uh, in vogue uh, horror director who you know is, is good at, at creating scary sequences um, but it, it's it's hard it's hard to make scary movies it really is and so at, at this point in, in where it stands with not just the alien series but in terms of uh, scary movies horror movies as a whole uh, I mean that's that's something that's almost unattainable to make something truly truly scary Gene Simmons, I uh, love your work, Mr. Simmons, uh, and I love all your content. He says, your Earth Wars reading transport me to those moments. Thank you. I'm, I'm so glad you enjoy them, Gene. Absolutely. They're, those were, I mean, really my favorite things to do. Uh, I, I'm kind of sad that that whole kind of story arc is, is over and done with, but there's definitely more things that I, I will be doing in, in terms of kind of... Uh, the comic and novel kind of combination readings and finding the line between them. Uh, but the Earthward, that was just such a special story. And, and you know, if, if it weren't for Alien 3, maybe they could have kept on with these characters in, in a completely different way. Uh, but what we're left with is something, I think, quite precious. And the, the, the fact that so many people enjoy those videos on them, I think it speaks to, to how great that story is. Rico Diaz has given a, a super chat. Thank you, Rico Diaz. I really appreciate it. Uh, Earth War should be a TV show series. It's, uh, uh, Kane Death, Kanedeth, Kanedeth 28th. Um, yeah, I think so. Maybe they'll do that for the Alien uh, FX series. You never know. You're a powerful and attractive man. Gene Simmons quote. Gene Simmons, he's a man. Uh, Lashing Mr. X01 question. Most interesting alien host combo you'd like to see, maybe just as concept art, like Blue Whale plus Alien or Jurassic Park crossover, only as a standalone one-shot or something. Oh, man. Ooh, that's, that is a tough one. Um... That I don't know. That's uh, putting me on the spot there. That's that's a tough one. Um, they they've done a lot of kind of the the obvious uh, standout kind of ones like you know gorilla alien. That's super cool. Rhino alien things like that. Uh, then something that comes out a little bit of left field with like say the snake alien, mantis alien things like that. So so maybe uh, something more insect or, or arachnid like uh, would be kind of cool to see since. You know, the alien kind of shares a lot of properties uh, with, with insects. Uh, maybe like a spider alien. Have they done that? They must have at some point. Maybe a spider alien would be pretty cool. The big one says it would be cool if they did an alien Lego movie. I absolutely agree with that. I don't care if anyone else doesn't. <laughs> I would love to see that. Or, you know, just make official alien Lego sets. They have all the Star Wars stuff, Harry Potter, Jurassic Park, Avengers, all that kind of stuff. Give us some alien stuff. Uh, you know, they even have, like, uh, Friends, the TV series, uh, Golden Girls. They have all that kind of stuff. So why not Alien? Come on. It's owned by Disney now. It's family-friendly, technically. Thunder Tazzy 412. Hey, Alien 3, what would happen if a demon from Doom was impregnated by a facehugger? Pain would happen. Lots and lots of pain. Uh, <laughs> that would be cool to see, though. I'm not sure which one. If you mean, like, the, the big motherfuckers with, like, you know, the the cannon attached to their hand, that, that you'd be in trouble. Watchtower Studio says, Is Arnold or a Predator more badass? Ooh, that's that's a tough one. Are we talking Arnold 87 or, or Arnold now? Because Arnold now, I mean, God bless him, but uh, Predator would whip his ass all over Earth. Um, but if we're talking Arnold in his prime, I think, you know, I think the first Predator speaks for itself. He, he outwitted, outmatched, outplayed that Predator. And it wasn't uh, wasn't a younger Predator like the one uh, Danny Glover went up against. It was kind of a, a fairly seasoned Predator. So, yeah, I'd say Arnold gets the edge. Dimos Mars asks, do you think a xenomorph facehugger could impregnate a deacon or a neomorph? I don't think so. Um, 
Yeah, I, I, I don't think so. I think it would just fail. It, it wouldn't. Uh, it just wouldn't work. Graham Taylor asks, "What other alien media do you plan to cover, like you did with Earth War?" Um, I'm moving into uh, the genocide uh, story right now, so so looking with a fine tooth comb over the the book uh, and the comic, uh, kind of seeing what to kind of grab from them and put into videos. Um, much like with with the Earth War storyline, it comes with. Differences, big and small, and it's kind of just a matter of finding what's the most interesting and what would be best to cover in a video. Effervescent Soliloquy says, What is your favorite version of Alien? DVD, Blu-ray, Director's Cut. That That's a tough one, too. I mean, I do like the Director's Cut, uh, and, and I like how it includes the... The, the cocoon scene, of course, is just such a famous scene um, that wasn't even in the movie until 2003, officially. Um, but I, I just hate how they took out um, certain things, like the little things they took out, like uh, Dallas asking Mother what his chances are before going in the vents. I thought that, you know, that's one of the, the you know, most enduring moments for that character, and, and why they would omit it is beyond me. So... I'll say, you know, I'll stick with the theatrical cut. Uh, and you can view it on, on Blu-ray as, as well, so you, you get all the visual beauty and uh, standout sound. You get everything that you would with the director's cut anyway. But, uh, yeah, I, I go theatrical. Billy Charter says, don't know if legal issues would stop you, but I'd like you to do a deep dive on the Blueprint coffee table books. That would be killer. Uh, that could be fun. Uh, maybe a, a, one one at a time, kind of, to do uh, a deep dive into the technology and stuff like that. Uh, Brian Yacobellis gives a super chat. Thank you. <laughs> Angel James says, alien theory unscripted sounds odd. Yes, I know. That's why I don't really do these live streams too often. It's, it's odd to me too. I, I can assure you that. Um, it's it, it feels more comfortable to me uh, to have something scripted, to have uh, a, a direction in which to go, uh, in, instead of umming and eyeing like I'm doing right now. Uh, Canada eighth, twenty eighth, at. Do you think Disney will make Amanda the main character from here on out? Maybe Newt. I, I don't think either, actually. I think if, if they were to do anything, they're, they're going to create their own characters. Um, they'd probably want something that they can rightly own themselves and not risk any legal issues like they've been doing with um, the Thomas Brothers uh, with, with Predator, which that's a whole, whole other thing. Uh, that could spell disaster uh, for, for the Predator series and could put a damper on... You know, expecting to see any more. Rakaith Way says, Did you hear that the canon consultant, Andrew Gaska, the great Andrew Gaska, uh, confirmed that Alien Predator and AVP are separate continuities and canons? Uh, I, I didn't hear that specifically, but I mean, I think that's a fair uh, flag to pin down, I say. You know, it's, it's fair enough. Exit to Red says, can you make a video on who actually wrote Alien? For me, it's clearly Dan O'Bannon, and the biggest evidence of this is Dark Star, which is Alien with laughs. Uh, yeah, I mean, that could be an interesting thing to c compare uh, O'Bannon's original script to the, the shooting script, revised. Um, but, I, I mean, it's, 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 it's a baby with many fathers. What can I say? It's, it's a collaborative piece. Um, but, you know, it all starts with O'Bannon. I think most people would agree with that.
Chat Hound Bud says, do you like the new comics? Uh, so far I do. So far I'm enjoying them. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to what happens next. The second issue that has come out, uh, it's ended on kind of a, a, a cliff... Well, I guess they all end on cliffhangers, but it's ended on something interesting. We see an alien kind of emerging uh, from, from the shadows of Epsilon Station. We're thinking, what's going to happen next? And I, I want to see what happens next. Mercutius asks, when you originally decided to make the YouTube channel... Were you told that you needed to utilize your voice beforehand? We love listening to your videos. Thank you very much. Um, nobody uh, told told me uh, anything. It just kind of happened. Uh, Matt242129 gives a super chat. Says, just want to say I appreciate your excellent work. Thank you so much, Matt. Uh, I appreciate you saying that, and uh, I I love doing this. I'm, I'm so I'm I'm you know. I just want to stop and say right now that I'm so thrilled that so many people are here right now and, and we're all kind of nerding out on Alien. It's it's a dream. Uh, Andre Demania says, Thanks for the content. Happy to say, stay connected with my fave franchise through your channel. Cheers. Yes, absolutely. That's that's what it's all about. It's, it's staying connected with the franchise. That's what it truly is. Um, though there may be lulls, uh, though... There have been, like, studio issues, legal issues, that kind of brought the franchise into directions that we maybe weren't anticipating. Um, there, there's always stuff in between to talk about, like the comics, like the novels, like games. Um, so I feel we're, we're fortunate uh, with so much to fill the void, I guess you could say, Um not to not to devalue uh, you know uh, great work from very talented people, but primarily we always kind of think, hey, the this is a film series. the the big events are in, are in the films, and everything else is kind of you know secondary, which is is true, and, and I'm sure those same talented people are aware of that. Um, but to to have such good content uh, circulating around all of it. Uh, is is very much appreciated, and I, th I think we're quite fortunate. Andrew White says, "Why did the studios ignore the Dark Horse content?" Uh, that's hard to say. I mean, it, it seems like every major motion st picture studio that has some relation to some comics, they they tend to really really ignore um, a lot of what we see in comics, whether it be a directly comic oriented franchise like you know Superman, Batman. Um, they do tend to ignore it, especially kind of in more of, say, uh, the infancy of comic book movies where, you know, they, they take, I don't know, Superman 4 and make Nuclear Man has nothing to do with anything, you know, it's such, such silly, put Richard Pryor in the third one, what, what are they doing? Um, so they didn't seem to have a reverence for the comics, uh, which is true for a lot of franchises. There's, there's not... Um, Unfortunately, not uh, kind of I don't know uh, a coordination between between those two factors. I guess Tech Forty Nine Super Chats says, "Does this mean we get full shares?" Yes, this means we get full shares. We're gonna go home. We're gonna party. We're not stopping for any stupid moon. I don't care about no distress signal. Let's get back in the old freezerinos. Right. Lauren Siegel says, first Superman villain was Zod and Tolian Comics. Well, that, yeah, absolutely, that's true. Gold Dreggard says, I've been meaning to ask forever, but what is the music you use in, the, in your videos? Um, music I use in my videos, it's, it's, it's kind of like a Frankenstein, uh, combination of, of a lot of stuff. Um, it, it's all from YouTube's free music library. Uh, Lemix Lion says, beta, canon, or not, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the earlier games, AVB2 and Alien Trilogy. Even if it's just comparison, have you thought of covering it? Uh, I've definitely thought about covering uh, the games. Uh, I love the first AVP from 1999-2000. Uh, I love 
uh, APP2. Alien Trilogy I, I, it came a little bit, I think it was 96 uh, that that came out. Um, and it's kind of a funny thing where it's, it's very much kind of a Doom-inspired game, but I know a lot of uh, the people who worked on Doom said they're pretty much inspired by like, kind of like an Aliens type of action. So funny how that worked out, right? <laughs> um, but absolutely, I mean, nothing's off the table uh, when it comes to talking about those those games. And and AVP 1 and 2 for the PC in particular, those those were those are two games that I, I, I really have good memories of, that I really value. And yeah, I, I just hope to, uh, you know, somehow express that. In, in some form or another. It probably would be easier with AVP2 uh, out of all of them because it's really the most story-centric game. Like, the first AVP doesn't even really have a story. Alien Trilogy barely has a story. Um, AVP2, though, it, uh, it, it, it gets into its own plot, which is kind of cool. Uh, Chris Breyer says, Never expected the Superman x Alien comic to be as good as it was. Thanks for that vid. Uh, yeah, absolutely, uh, and thank you. And uh, it's it, it's one of the best crossovers of of all the you know aliens kind of making their way into the special you know worlds of say, Batman, Superman, things like that. I think it's it's truly fantastic, and I think they got got everything right with that one. Sorry, I just missed out on some comics. Or some comments. Um, Aaron says, AT, love your channel. I don't think Prometheus, Prometheus should have been made. The space jockey being left unexplored made the universe more interesting. Having David create the alien makes the entire franchise less alien. Thoughts? Um, to some extent, I agree with that, for sure. Um, what I think Prometheus was trying to do in kind of having its cake and eating it, too, is is showing a, a space jockey that's not the space jockey from from Alien, uh, but something else entirely where someone could make the argument of, are, are these engineers, are they replicating something that they've seen? Uh, is that their business? And things of that nature. And you could say so of David as well, is, is uh, creating the Zetamore of his own creation, replicating something he's seen, replicating something the engineers have seen uh, in Advent, the... Uh, the short uh, film that, that came along with the Alien Covenant Home video, it kind of suggests that uh, he was not directly responsible, uh, though he was just following uh, in instructions, uh, so to speak. Or, or at least he makes mention that the engineers were not uh, brave enough to take the step, though they knew how. So that, that suggests to me that it has existed previously, the Xenomorph, um, though maybe not for a very long time. So I, I think they're trying to, you know, ha have their cake and eat it too, which I, I guess is fine. Um, but th there was a demand for seeing seeing something prior to Alien, at least something. And I, I think if it connected it exactly, like say they do with the Star Wars prequels, where they pretty much line up that last Star Wars prequel to to fit directly into the fourth one, maybe it just wouldn't uh, have satisfied. Maybe it would have been even more poorly received, uh, if that's possible. Um, so I think it was very carefully considered in, in trying to be ambiguous, but to still give us some glimpses of things. But uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm happy with, with how both those movies have, have turned out, and I would still like to see more, quite honestly from Ridley Scott. Um, and speaking of which, uh, Grayson Sanford, thank you very much for your super chat. How would you wrap up David's story if they asked you to write the next movie? Um, oof, well, I, I don't know if I'd ever have the gall to do that, but I think very clearly to me what David has to experience in some form is death. Uh, I, I think that's kind of where his story seems to have been heading. Uh, he's uh, obsessed with creation. He's uh, kind of broken free from his servitude as, as an android uh, with, with the death of, of his creator, uh, and he's kind of 
left on his own uh, to, to do what what he wishes to do, which is quite terrifying. Um, but I think it, it, it only makes sense that he would have to die in some way, whether it be at the hands of the xenomorph or whether it just be he, he can no longer function, just, you know, uh, kind of uh, slowly ticks away like an old clock. I don't know. He's, he's still not a real boy at the end of it all. Smokey McBee says, I, a few years ago I met Bishop Lance Henriksen when he was in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Hey, all right, Toronto, Ontario. Uh, beautiful, beautiful. Um, yeah, Lance is great. He's, he's one of the best. Hello, Sonna. says, did you see the trailer for the game Scorn? It's horror and inspired by H.R. Giger's work, Opinions. Uh, I don't think I saw a trailer. I saw some images, though, and it definitely, definitely looked uh, Giger-esque. But I'd be curious to, to see how that plays out, whether it is a horror game or maybe it's, I don't know, a role-playing game, some kind of an action role-playing game. Um, that I don't know. Toronto, Ontario. Hell yeah! Hell yeah to Toronto, Ontario. Um, well, maybe not lately. <laughs> uh, David, would you like to take a sip of this water? LV426 says a super chat. Amazing to catch you live. Great content. My favorite video is the one that details the Jordan's venture into Derelict's ship. Poor us. Um, yeah, I really like that video too. That's uh, uh, the Alien River of Pain uh, excerpt, which that's a great novel. I think it's, you know, it, it gives a lot of people what they, they could have wanted in, in a backstory for the Hadley's Hope uh, infestation. Uh, maybe added some things that, you know, I... I I don't quite feel worked uh, as good as they could have or added too many things that maybe they shouldn't have, but altogether I think it's it's probably the close to it as, as the best uh, that they could have done. Cactus, how do you think Fireteam will turn out? Uh, only time will tell. Adam Abrams says, hope you see this, really enjoy your work, and love the content you produce. Please keep it up. Thank you, Adam. I really do appreciate that. I, I really do. And I will absolutely keep it up. It's it's something I love doing, and I have no plans of stopping unless Disney destroys my channel. Uh, Van Wolfster says, ever thought about making a fan project recreation of any alien storyline? Kind of like <laughs> Shrek retold a compilation of people's arts to tell the story. That would be cool. Yeah, and I think they did that with Star Wars too. Um, that would be a very entertaining but time-consuming project. Uh, so I don't know. What do they call that? They, there's a special name for that. Sweeting, I think, isn't it? Um, just people kind of recreating the scenes. Some in animation. Some, you know, with like cardboard cutouts of like spaceships. Uh, I think that'd be really cool. Um, but, uh, I mean, I'd, I'd be very happy to contribute in some way, but to, uh, be on the forefront of it, uh, I think, you know, uh, I think I'd get an ulcer doing that, unfortunately. Uh, Mike Irish says, have you read Alien, the original screenplay from Dark Horse, and if so, what did you think? Uh, I have, uh, and I enjoyed it. I, I thought it was really well done. I thought the art was, uh, beautiful. I thought the design that they were kind of able to tap into with having it be alien-ish with being its own kind of thing. Uh, I think it worked really well. And, you know, it, it is kind of a bittersweet thing because I think that will hold a, a special place in a lot of Alien fans' hearts because that's the last Dark Horse release. So it's kind of a bittersweet thing. But yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I really did. Sean Whitehall, Super Chat. What's your favorite creature design of the Alien films? What costume would you least like to meet at a black alley as a prank? Um, I kind of like, you know, well, obviously the big chap is, is the best, I think. That's the best design. That's the classic. That's uh, pure alien to, to me and to, to a lot of people. It's, it's the big chap. Um... 
but maybe a very close second is is the runner alien i love the runner alien from alien 3 i think that's such a cool design um i i, I wouldn't want to meet either in a costume in a black alley uh black a back alley um as a prank um you know maybe out in an alley grabbing a pepsi and then the alien 3 alien jumps out and attacks me it's a strange reference to make but anyone who's seen that pepsi commercial knows that's what i'm talking about equals mc2d the alien from covenant was badass it, it was it was a vicious little fucker i mean it really was i thought that was one thing that they did uh quite well with with that creature they, they made it really really uh snarling and, and just this this force of nature mega sniper says should alien 4 be canon uh I'd say dealer's choice. I mean, some some days you're in a mood for just Alien and Aliens, then you forget Alien 3, Alien Resurrection. Uh, another time, Alien, Aliens, Alien 3 works well as a trilogy. At least there's some, you know, decent enough closure, trilogy, closer, uh, closure. Um, but I don't mind Alien Resurrection. I mean, if you're in the right mood for it. I've said this before. I've said it before on the channel that... Uh, when you're in the right mood for it, it, it plays well. Uh, Gears LG LF says, no new Reeboks this year. Yeah, they've, they're done with it. They, they, I'm pretty sure they said they're no longer going to be making Reebok alien shoes. Which makes me especially glad that I was able to get a pair uh, last year. So that was one of the proudest moments of my life as an alien fan was getting those limited edition Reebok bug stompers. Um, I, I've never worn them. I've kept them in the box. Um, they're they're like precious, you know, diamonds to me. Colin Albanito says, "Have you done any videos on the Alien King? I've just got done watching your entire Earth War series. It's amazing, by the way. Thank you very much. Uh, Alien King. Uh, I'm going to be covering them uh, soon enough." But it's 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 in the cards. Lord Siegel says Alien Three reinforced the fact that the Xenomorph took on the traits and features of its hosts. It has to exist. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Dimos Mars says the Ripley clone designs from Alien Resurrection were pretty cool. I'd have loved to have seen that one with the Xenoface alive. Uh, that would be pretty scary to see. I wonder if you know at some point. You know, were they, you know, just kind of like stillborn or, or were they, you know, alive and like screaming for, for death like like uh, Seven was? Uh, hard to say. Mike Iris says, any more Predator content planned for the channel? Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, and thank you. Thank you once again, Mike. Um, some stuff I have in mind. I, I mean, definitely Alien versus Predator stuff I want to cover. Uh, there's still a fair amount to go into with. Uh, uh, Lieutenant Schaefer, which his story is very interesting. So I'd, I'd like to cover that more. One of, one of my favorite videos to to do of recently was uh, the the Yacha invasion of New York City, nineteen eighty nine. Uh, that was really cool, and I'd love to do that again and try try again for my tough action guy voice. You know, groovy stuff like that. Jerome Holland says, whilst working from home, having your year one, two, and three playlists playing in the background has, has been epic. Oh, thank you. That's, that's great to hear. I'm glad you're enjoying those years. Four is pretty good, too, I think. Uh, Darth Bane says, listen, I had a breakthrough. Uh-oh. It went away. Listen, I had a breakthrough. The engineers are sterile. They discovered the Xeno homeworld and use infection and genetic absorption to reproduce. That explains the Deacon mural. Uh, yeah, I think that's... That is something that's that's worth worth chewing on, I think. I mean, that's that's possible. We never really see what's you know what these guys are packing if they have you know if they have uh, genitalia at all, right? They could look like Ken dolls underneath there, right? So we, we don't really know. 
or it could just be yeah they don't have the ability to to reproduce Daniel Damgard says love 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 the work that you do for all us alien fans out there what about a top 10 novel or audiobook that could be interesting uh, there's still so many audiobooks I want to listen to like just recently they uh, you know released uh, infiltrator uh, which I, I read the book, but I haven't listened to the audiobook version, which I really want to. Because um, Bronson Pinchot, he's, he's a, a great uh, narrator, and he did a great job with with uh, Phalanx, so I can only imagine what he's, he's done with Infiltrator, and, and uh, quite a bit more. Um, so that'd be fun. That'd be fun, like a top ten kind of thing. Well, yeah, the the alien outtakes we're talking about are, are quite uh, creepy. The crab walking alien is nightmare fuel. I'd agree with that. Um, and wondering why they cut it out from the film. Maybe it was just because in that scene, maybe you know it it looked a little too obvious that it was a guy in a suit. It works and it's lit well enough. Um, but I don't know. You could tell it was a guy in a suit, which they're trying to avoid. Mac Wade says, are you going to do any videos on Predator Hunting Grounds? Uh, well, speaking of which, I still want to read that Predator Hunting Grounds uh, prequel novel, um, which I've yet to do, which I hear uh, has some details about Dutch that could be interesting. Um, that might be something I want to, to explore. LB426, have you made by chance a, a video that covers Jonesy exclusively? No, but I'd like to, and I plan to, so keep an eye out. Thunder Tazzy, what's better, Prometheus or Covenant? I say Prometheus. Spencer Chung the second says, "What's the oldest piece of alien memorabilia you own?" Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, I own the first thing that comes to mind is I have a 1992 uh, film reel. Of Alien 3's trailer. I forget which trailer it is because it had a lot of trailers. Um, but that could be the oldest, oldest and the moldiest of uh, alien memorabilia. Uh, so that's stocked away somewhere. It's it's sealed, I believe, uh, in you know plastic baggies so it doesn't get too exposed more than it already is. Um, that might be the oldest. I don't really have anything from you know. Uh, Alien 79, which would be interesting because sometimes, you know, you, you, you go on eBay and you uh, look up certain things and there's such interesting stuff. Like, I've, I've seen on eBay they have, like, matchbooks from 1979 with the Alien logo on them. You know, like, restaurants used to give out matchbooks and stuff like that. So that might be nice to have a little 1979 Alien matchbook. Maybe maybe that I'll get because it's, it's uh, not too expensive, I don't think. Sentinel Aaron writes, which one do you prefer, Dark Horse, Fire and Stone, or Life and Death? Ooh, that's that's actually a tough one. Um, I, I was reading through Fire Fire and Stone more recently. Um, Life and Death I'd want to go back to before I make a final kind of decision on that. But uh, for now, just because it's more fresh in my memory, I would say Fire and Stone. But both are good, and, and both are kind of representative of a very hopeful era in, in the Dark Horse comic series, kind of post-Prometheus, um, that, that had a lot of new possibilities. And they could do a lot of new fun things uh, with the franchise, with um, uh, crossovers from the franchises. So those are two very good series, I'd say. Scott Stegbauer says, I'm sure you've seen this already, but I just saw it. Original Xenomorph suit up for auction. I wonder what it smells like. Oof, I don't want to imagine it smells like, you know, sweat and fear. Aged a good 40 years. I don't know. Dan 
Daniel St. Fernando wrote, Have you met Sigourney? I have not, but let me tell you a story. Um, not a story, just, I don't know, a funny thing. Um, when the Alien uh, High School play came out, that was, you know, that was a big thing. Like all, all the news stations were covering it and stuff like that. Everyone was making a big deal out of it and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And uh, the director, Perfecto Cuervo, he got a hold of me and he said, hey, thanks for, for covering it on, on your YouTube. Uh, you can come if you want to our last show. Uh, we, ha we can have a ticket waiting for you. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, I'm, I'm Canadian, uh, so that would have been all the way in the States. It was, it was just too, too short notice to kind of get everything uh, organized, which I'm sure if I really hustled, I could have. But that was the show that Sigourney Weaver came to. So I just imagine another, you know, time in my life where if I would have went, I would have met Sigourney Weaver. Uh, that would have been amazing. Um, but c'est la vie. You know, that, that was a really kind of special time that really tugged at the, the hearts of a lot of Alien fans. Just goes to show, you know, how, how loved that movie is and, and how culturally re relevant it still is by having it performed by, you know, these kids. Who would have thought, you know? It's a bunch of high school kids. Oh, dang, he's a fellow Canadian. That's right. I am. Oh, what a missed chance. Ah, no, it's fine. It's not like, I mean, when you think about it, uh, what are the chances I would have, you know, beaten through the crowd anyway and met her or anything like that? Um, where in Canada are you from? I am locked down in Ontario right now. And, uh, yeah, just uh, waiting, 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 waiting. Canadian? Canadian? Is this not body? Yes, Canadian. Canada, eh? Which part? Ontario. Ontario. Good things grow in Ontario. Yeah, so, uh, Sang de Rose, so glad to be here with all y'all alien fans. My people. My people. My people. Yes, absolutely. We alien fans were quite cool, I think. Do you know how to speak French? I'm Quebecois. Uh, barely. Um, je m'appelle Derek. <laughs> that's, that's my French. Yeah. Um, uh, Sergio Cobos gives a super chat. Thank you so much, Sergio. I really appreciate it. Michael Sean asks, are your borders still closed? I don't even, I think they are. I, I don't know. I think so. It's hard to tell. Uh, we have Kingston, Ontario. Sean Whitewall, yes. Do you collect alien statues or artwork? If so, do you have a favorite piece? Says Batman Scores. Uh, no, I don't really have any statues. Like, I've seen some really cool, you know, the sideshow collectibles. Um, those are just exquisite. They really are. Um, I never really had it in me to make that plunge. I don't know. Because they are expensive, right? Um, and it's just where you put it probably the most expensive thing I've got were the shoes and you know it's hard to justify sometimes Catherine Kruger says oh neat thanks for shouting out our podcast in the description absolutely uh, I mentioned this uh, a, a little bit earlier uh, but uh, yeah definitely check out the bad company podcast uh, I, I had a guest appearance on uh, Catherine and Denal's uh, Alien Day special, which was uh, a, a wild <laughs> uh, conversation where many topics were explored, many uh, uh, strange tangents we went on from, you know, chicken bones on Drake's gear to all, all kinds of uh, nutty, nutty things. <laughs> but it was, it was very fun. 
Um, and it's it's a two hour long uh, podcast, so it's 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 very fun. So if, if you're having fun enjoying this right now, I think you're you're really gonna dig the podcast too. Uh, JBR says, did they produce any official goodies games, Audible Dramas for Alien Day 2021? Not from what I've seen. Well, goodies, yeah. I mean, they have, uh, you know, they, they came out with a, a clothing line of some kind, some alien shirts with some really cool alien sunglasses that I saw. Uh, I forget uh, forget the company, but uh, uh, they had some stuff, but nothing nothing mind-blowing, nothing amazing, unfortunately. Michael Sean says, do you have a cat named Jonesy? No, I do not. There's an idea. Chicken Bones the Movie, Catherine Cruz says. Yes, absolutely. Chicken Bones the Movie. Grayson Sanford says, Dennis Villeneuve should, uh, should direct the next one. That could be interesting. But at the same time, you know, maybe he doesn't want to be, you know, Ridley Scott's janitor in a sense, already having done Blade Runner. Damon Crawford says, Hey, Alien Theory, happy Alien Day. Oops, I lost it. Love your work. Do you have any of the Funko Pops that is Alien? Yeah, I have a few. Uh, I have uh, Ripley in her spacesuit from the first film. I have one of the Xenomorphs. I actually have two of the Xenomorphs, but they're, they're, they're the same one. Um... I have like a mini alien Funko Pop as well, and actually that's one of the newer things that they uh, that they revealed today. I think it's a GameStop exclusive. They have a Ripley in her power loader Funko Pop, which is quite interesting. Uh, that I'd love to see, um, and I just love to see more aliens themed because that's really when you think about it, that's the only aliens uh, centered pop Funko Pop that they've made so far uh all, all the rest have either been the first alien or have been alien covenant because those those funko pops came out when alien covenant was released but I, i'd love to have you know a hudson pop a hicks pop a vasquez pop a drake pop a, you know a little newt pop you know all those kind of things and not that i'm a huge collector of uh, funko pops i have a few they're fun little things uh, sometimes, you know, the, the collecting can be addictive. I do have some friends who, uh, have like an insane, insane Funko collection that like, you know, takes up the whole wall, <laughs> um, or several walls maybe. Um, so I don't want to get caught into that trap where I'm just like feeling the addiction, you know, but if it's aliens for sure, petition for Hudson pop and Drake, definitely. Danny White says, about audio drama version, I think Out of the Shadows is by far the best. Acting voices are awesome. Laurel Lefkow, Ripley. Yeah, I mean, she's spot on as Ripley, and, and she's great. Uh, I think that might be my favorite of, of the, the, the audio dramas as well, uh, because I like that they're able to sneak in another Ripley story. I mean, suspend your disbelief if you have to i mean it's 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 necessary i suppose but I, I really like kind of this this strange uh beauty and the beast relationship that's explored with with uh, ripley and with ash uh, kind of himself being freed in a way but imprisoned in another and, and kind of wanting to in a way confront death <laughs> i feel michael Shaw says i feel the addiction man I guess so, if, you, if you're, you're getting those Funkos. Dartha Louis says, What do you think of Blade Runner and also the supposed shared universe with Alien? Uh, I can buy it. I mean, definitely there have been some Easter eggs uh, that, that have appeared, uh, such as on the Prometheus menu. There's uh, a Wayland internal memo that references... Um, uh, Joe Turkle's character, gosh, what is what is his name? Um, Joe Turkle uh, references his his character um, in Blade Runner, um, and the the computer screens and things like that. Um, 
and of course certain little nods here and there like of course uh, one one big one that people will, will note from alien covenant is that uh, uh, David he he shares that same line that uh, uh, Roy Batty says ah, that's the spirit when when he's fighting with uh, Daniel so that's kind of a, a weird echo that kind of suggests, even though they're different studios, of course, a Tyrell boss. Yes, that's some other person said Ty Tyrell. Yes, Tyrell. Joe Turkle, Tyrell. Um, Mega Sniper 117 says, Alien versus which Marvel character film would you like to see? Uh, hmm. I don't know. I, I know for sure I'd love to see uh, Predator versus Iron Man. I think that's just, you know, done deal that's that's... You know, you don't need to be a writer to know it's going to be a great idea. But the aliens specifically, uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I would hesitate to say, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy, because that seems like kind of a natural thing. But I, I wouldn't want it to be too goofy, too funny. I want it to be something serious, um, at least to an extent, you know. Uh, so that's hard to say. But I'll, I'll say, I'll, I'll give a quasi answer and that I'd love to see uh Iron Man versus Predator. I think that'd be pretty pretty cool. Uh Daniel Kazmaras read the Foster novels absolutely. Uh, I love them. He's done the the three the first three adaptations and on covenant and covenant origins as well uh which covenant origins it's, it's it's not a bad book i haven't covered it that much i think i really only talked about uh a certain segment that relates to uh Wayland's death that they re reference um but it's, it's an interesting book you know with this whole kind of kind of like a, a cult really uh that foresee some terrible things happening if the Covenant mission is successful and they uh, kidnap uh, Yutani's daughter and, and you know it's it's it, it has its problems it, it's not uh, not entirely within the realm of Alien the way it feels but I think it's it's a strong book and and it's really cool that that Alan Dean Foster was able to write his own original story within the alien universe and do it on, on I suppose his own terms and I suppose in his own way Biden Peacock says what are your thoughts on the future of the franchise um well if, if they're their thoughts or suppositions or, or whatever they may be uh, I know for sure we have a television show coming, which is good. Um, that will be interesting to see. I'd love it if we actually got a movie. I mean, that's kind of where they're all centered. The, the original Alien was a movie, and, the, you know, everything else is kind of extending around that. So uh, I, I look forward to the television series. I'm enjoying the new comics. Uh, as far as the future where it goes it could go anywhere uh my only hope is that they don't do a reboot which i heard this ridiculous rumor that they were planning a reboot but it's you know just complete bullshit from some news website air quotes news website that just basically makes up stories so i don't i don't give that any uh any thought um but i'd like to see it continue in some way uh, I'd I'd love to see an, another uh, David centered film, if Ridley Scott were still able to do that. I'd love to see, possibly Blomkamp's film, somehow make its way back into development. I mean, we have a completely different studio now. We have Disney, doing it. So I mean, that's not completely out of the realm of possibilities. Uh, we have uh, a treatment written by David Geiler, uh, and. Um, I know Sigourney Weaver said she wasn't interested in it, but, you know, maybe it can be fine-tuned, maybe. You know, both Walter Hill and, and David Geiler, they're the, they're the original guys, aside from uh, O'Bannon and Chassette, of course. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see what that was.
Tyler says, God, I want to see Blomkamp's movie more than anything. Well, I mean, it's a good sign, I think, that uh, they haven't released the screenplay or anything like that. Or, I mean, maybe it wasn't a full screenplay. Maybe it was just a treatment. Um, but it's maybe a good stand. A good sign. <laughs> Sorry, just listen to the uh, River Pain audiobook. Colin Salmon was great. Wish your last stand of Hadley Soap video was longer than five minutes. One of my favorites. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely, uh, you know, go back to a lot of Hadley Soap stuff, I think. There's still more to cover, definitely. The Numerum, uh, Super Chess is, um, uh, it doesn't say anything, but thank you very much, The Numerum. Aladdin Peacock says, thank you for answering my question. I too would love to see Blomkamp's movie. Lemmix Lyons says, did you catch the 6th Alien 40th Anniversary films? Got a fave. Uh, I, yeah, I did. Um, I, I'm definitely partial to Orr, which I think was really, really good. Um, but then I think the very first one, I, I believe the first one that was released was called Containment, if I'm not mistaken. That might have been my favorite. Uh, just cause it had this kind of intense fever dream feel to it, which doesn't even show an alien we just see kind of the tail of a chest burster uh and it was very frightening i thought so i thought they did a good job with like getting like a scary kind of vibe to it um but they're all good uh but definitely or in containment i thought Th those were my two preferred Some other person says, hello, great content. What do you think of aliens like stuff, like species? Also, will you cover I Come in Peace and Split Second? Also, have you looked into the Alien RPG? Uh, species was a pretty good movie. Uh, I, I hadn't seen all the Species movies. I saw one and two, I think. That was about it. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, they're good for their time. I mean, you look at them now and the special effects are a little uh, questionable. But uh, I thought they did a good job uh, with those movies. And, and and of course, when you have someone like Giger behind it, um, you can't go wrong as far as creature design is confirmed. Steve Nichols says, yeah, someone says, I wonder what this guy sounds like when he's mad. Steve Nichols says, my money says AT is chilled as F even when he's mad. Uh, yeah, I mean, we all get mad. We all We all get a little mad sometimes. This guy could narrate a colon exam. I don't think I'll be narrating Alien vs. Predator Requiem anytime soon. Hey, hey. Um, Danu Bear says, do you think Disney are going to handle the Alien franchise well? I think so, because I think they'll have the smarts enough to pass off the more creative stuff to someone who knows what they're doing uh, in realizing that it's more kind of a niche uh, franchise, not like Star Wars, where it's everyone they want everyone to go see the star wars movie so we need to tag every single demographic ever uh, to, to make this the big worldwide hit um with alien i think they'll hopefully have have you know the sense to say hey there's kind of a specific fan base here uh we don't want to maybe put too much money into it but enough to make it look good and, and enough to you know uh, appeal to them which i hope so so uh sean hinchcliffe says mimic is a good movie yes mimic is a good movie charles s dutton also in that movie uh from alien 3 not not a bad not a bad creature feature austin wilcott says do you think marvel will put out good aliens comics so far i'm 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 happy with what we've seen but it's it's still a little early to tell i would have to say uh once we get uh the full story i'll be able to know if i want to continue any further but so far this story specifically i i want to i want to keep going i want to stick with it so i mean that's that's enough at this point right uh don't forget the thing absolutely john carpenter's the thing that's that's a wonderful uh film uh baz 35 says but won't disney make alien a pg no i i doubt they will they'll, they'll release it under a different studio of some kind uh i'm sure um one thing I realize is that uh, 
well, I mentioned earlier that they had the the Academy Awards last night, and technically, the movie that won the Academy Award for Best Picture, Nomad Land, uh, that's a Fox film. That's from Fox Searchlight Pitch, Searchlight Pictures, um, but now Disney owns Searchlight, so it's just called Searchlight Pictures now, um, and that certainly isn't you know a PG movie. That's well, maybe it is. I have no idea, actually. Um, but, uh, the thing is, like, you're not likely to see the the Disney Tower, the Disney Castle appear before an alien movie. They'll they'll also, I would imagine, have the sense to release it under a different uh, studio, even if they, if they make one up. Richard Williams says, I would like to see an alien movie where the aliens take over Earth and have a scene similar to the one in Aquaman, where the trenchers were swarming underwater. Uh, I, I haven't seen Aquaman, so I, I, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, that's kind of an interesting thing, because I know, didn't James Wan direct that? And he's more kind of known as, as a horror movie director. So maybe they should get these horror directors to, uh, to make alien films so they can kind of tap into that original fear that we all felt with the original film. Mac Waits says, what do you think of the Rage War trilogy and will you do any videos on it? Uh, I have to admit, I have not read the Wage War, <laughs> Rage War trilogy just yet. Um, I have a brief outline of it. I actually have them all downloaded on Audible, um, but I haven't, uh, haven't had a chance to listen to them. But for, from what I hear, they're, you know, the tops. So, like I say, even even this far into the channel that I've been, there's still stuff I just haven't covered, haven't even started with. So, I mean, that speaks volumes of, of, of how much there is, right? Um, but I hear nothing but absolute praise for the Rage War trilogy. Adam Abrams says, I want Robert Englund to direct an alien movie. Um, I don't know uh, if he's directed much, has he? Uh, I know he's Freddy Krueger, and he was an alien himself uh, in V, but uh, I don't know. Mega Sniper 117 says, do you think the engineers created the aliens, or would David create or the other? Uh, you know, possibly neither. Maybe they just had already kind of existed. That's kind of what I feel, uh, that they they existed in some form previously, uh, but they're just tapping into it in some way. Julie asks, what alien games do you like? Uh, I, I, I like a great deal, and the one I have most, you know, fond memories of is Alien vs. Predator for the PC from 1999. Or was it 2000? 99, 2000, uh, one of the two. Uh, there was also a period where I was very, very addicted to Aliens vs. Pinball, which <laughs> is a, a fun game. Um, and, yeah, I, I really enjoyed Alien Trilogy as well, and of course Alien Isolation. I mean, that's hard hard to beat. Um, yeah, just one of the great games. So another person says, Guillermo del Toro would be an excellent Alien director. I agree with that. I think he would do a good job. Brian O'Neill Singleton says, I always wanted a Species vs. Aliens comic. I think that would be pretty cool, too, actually. Not Morgan Freeman says, Aren't they giving away Alien Isolation for free right now? I believe they are, uh, through some store. I'm not sure which. It's not Steam, but it's some other game store. Um, so if you don't have it, pick it up. Check your, uh, check your local <laughs> listings, I guess. Mac Wade says, do you think the engineers created the Predators? No, I do not. I do not think that. Catherine Kruger says, uh, Aliens vs. Pinball, Pinball is great. Spent more time than I'd care to remember. Yeah, exactly. I think um, I was playing it most. I, I, it was during a time where, you know, I was uh, ill um, and spending a lot of time in bed recovering. And it was a very simple game to just pick up and play. So it was kind of the perfect thing. And I devoted many, many hours to it. And it's fun. It's always fun hearing, like, the, you know, quotes from the movie, like, game over, man. 
LB426 says, by the way, your tribute videos are so touching. We've lost quite a few recently, and coming here to see them and reading everyone's comments is peaceful. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's insane to, to think how much we lost just this year. Um, of course, you know, as I mentioned, I, I did, uh, I watched the Academy Awards, and, and they're very uh, nice to include not just Yafet Kato and, and Ian Holm, but also Ron Cobb and, and David Geiler who also uh, passed away. Um, and what was interesting is that they, the images they showed in their, like, you know, their immemorial, uh, in memoriam uh, segment, the the promotional pictures they showed of these actors were their roles from Aliens, or well, from Alien, I should say. Uh, so that just speaks to, you know, how iconic these roles were, right? I mean, they could have taken pictures from any number of roles that they did, but the, the, they chose those. So, so it was great. And of course, I mean, we also lost Jay Benedict, uh, Newt's father, which I, I don't think they included him in the memoriam, but uh, he he was another uh, member of the alien family that we unfortunately lost. And and, and that was sad to, to see, because I mean, comparatively, he was he was still quite young. Um, not like Holm and, and, and Kato, who were, you know, they're in their 80s, I believe, uh, each of them, but... Uh, I think uh, Jay Benedict was only about 63, 64, uh, which is way too young. And, you know, that, that was, you know, that was a sad thing to, to see. I mean, we watch these movies over and over and we experience them over and over and, and we become obsessed with every little detail, every little actor and, uh, or every little role, I should say. There are no small actors, only small roles. Or no, what's the expression? Uh, there are no small parts, only small actors. So, um, you know, we come to appreciate all who have uh, contributed to to these movies, and 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 to lose them is, you know, it is like losing. While you may not have met them ever, it's it's like losing someone who has inspired you. Um, it's it's hard to to. Uh, Digest. It is. It's, it's a tragic thing. So, so this year especially, we lost quite a few. Michael Bean was in The Mandalorian. Looked pretty good. Yeah, I caught that episode of The Mandalorian. Uh, that was that was fun to see. Um, he, he definitely looked good. Uh, he looked, you know. Not his age. Well, actually, I don't know what his age is, but he looked young enough, I guess. He looked, basically, to put it this way, he could still play Hicks if, if he really wanted to. GBSL says, what's your opinion on the first Alien movie all the way to the most recent Alien movie, which is Alien Covenant? It can be any movie that involves the aliens, excluding the AVP movies. What's, the, what's my opinion on... Uh, well, I, I, I can't say for sure, but uh, I, I do have a ranking video that's somewhere uh, in my uh, library of, of videos, uh, so maybe that's worth checking out, I guess. Um, I think the order I put them in, which I would, I would still probably adhere to now, is uh, Aliens is the best, or Alien, oh, interesting slip, uh, but Alien is the best, in my opinion, followed like by a hair uh, by Alien, Aliens. Again, we have another slip. Uh, alien and Aliens, basically. They're almost tied, but Alien first, uh, Aliens second. Then I would say Alien 3. Then uh, Prometheus. Uh, then Covenant. Then Resurrection. And, you know, you can forget the rest. So Michael Bean is 64. Wow, yeah, that's, that's quite a bit. Uh, well, we still need him. We'll still feed him, right? He's, he's still one of the best. Macway says, do you consider all Alien, Predator, and Alien vs. Predator movies to be canon? Um, I do and I don't. I mean, that's uh, such a a, a non-answer, but I sort of do and I sort of don't. Uh, Watch Tower Studios says, how did Michael Bean never become a big star? Uh, that's hard to say. I think, you know, his big, big, big hit, I guess, would have to be The Terminator, right? Um, so maybe he was starting to get, 
I don't know, sort of typecast in certain roles? Because he's also obviously in Aliens, in the Abyss, anything with Cameron, right? Um, but then what, what else does he, he do? Almost like sort of like B movies, like what was that Navy Seals he was in, um, which maybe wasn't so good. So maybe it was just a matter of not choosing the, the best roles. I, I don't know for sure. Um, but then, you know, some actors don't want to be Tom Cruise, right? Some actors are just happy being themselves. The Rock, oh, Biostock of 420 says The Rock. Yeah, The, the Rock was really awesome, too. But again, see, that's kind of like, uh, it felt like a riff on his abyss role. So he always, I don't know, gets just caught up in just, uh, I don't know. Even The Mandalorian, it was kind of a riff on, um, on Tombstone, in a way. It like, had a very similar, similar uh, feel to it. Uh, no one says, if I were Bean, I'd come with me if you want to live. Everybody pull up to a drive through Come with me if you want to live. Haha. <laughs> okay. I get it. <laughs> Bean was typecast. He was often soldiers. He was in the rocks as some other person. It, and it's interesting to think, you know, how would his career have gone if they did the the gibson alien 3 would he have been like super duper action star michael bean instead of you know let's get reliable character actor michael bean you know that would be interesting michael shaw says you accept that hicks was alive in colonial marines uh no i'll, I'll concede to no <laughs> Alan Riddle says, greetings from Belfast, Northern Ireland. Hope you're keeping well. I'm well, as, as well as I can be. Uh, I'm, I'm from Ontario, Canada. We're having some troubles recently, but uh, nothing we can't handle. But thank you, Alan. Uh, Fantas Morris says, take care, need to go. Good night, everyone. Keep going. Keep doing the awesome work. Thank you for coming, Fantas. I appreciate it. You have yourself a great day. And happy Alien Day. Alan Riddle says, my late beloved miniature schnauzer used to go mad whenever I watched the Alien vs. Uh, Ripley vs. Queen scene. She would growl and jump at the screen. Now that's a good dog. That's, that'll save you from xenomorphs. Ben Wolster says, imagine a xenomorph movie in the style of Grind Grindhouse Productions. Example, Hobo with a Shotgun. Well, I mean, we we sort of do. I mean, there's so many. It is inspired by B-movies in, in a lot of ways, so it would just be kind of reverting back to... Uh, Back to stuff like, I don't know, uh, It the Terror from Beyond Space, or Howard Hawks is the Thing, a million other movies. Not that those were necessarily B-movies, but they're definitely uh, inspiring. Uh, Sebastian Diaz says, can you tell us anything about the In Search of Tomorrow experience? Um, there's not too much to tell, I guess. Um, I, I've been talking back and forth a little bit via email with the filmmakers. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just... Uh, an interviewee it's not like I have have any say in anything but uh, they're really accessible and what they've been doing recently with this second campaign uh, for this is the Indiegogo the first time around it was the Kickstarter uh, they are releasing clips uh, from the segment so they they're releasing one I think every week or maybe every couple of days uh, I've been keeping an eye because there's like a shared folder kind of thing. Um, I haven't seen anything aliens related yet, but I, I as I understand, I'm allowed to share that uh, if it comes my way, basically. So um, that's something I could definitely do uh, once that because they have uh, Mark Rolston, they have Gary Hen, they have Jeanette Goldstein um, and Shane Black and and uh, uh, Alan Dean Foster as well. So there's like, quite a few alien related. Uh, talents in in this film so uh, I, I think I am allowed to give out little teases uh, when they become available if they become available uh, I haven't recorded anything for the interview just yet but I, again it's it's just been so tough because because of uh, the pandemic because of uh, my province is basically you know shut down locked down right so uh, we may have to do some kind of you know uh, local crew and, and work on remote uh, through I don't know Skype or something like that where 
uh, the director would feed the questions and, and the local crew would just, you know, record it. So this is basically the plan. When that will happen, who knows? Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's in progress. We, we have till, what, uh, December. Uh, Alan Riddle says, I've had the privilege of... Uh, Sorry, pop down. I've had the privilege of visiting, visiting Canada once. Sadly, I didn't uh, beyond the terminal at Pearson International. Uh, my final destination was the beautiful Vancouver. Oh, yes, Pearson Airport. I know it all too well. Uh, yeah, Canada's the best. Gold Dreggard says, hot take. I didn't like Alien Phalanx. Anything to do with the Xenos was great, but the interactions between the different holds... And the people in them felt forced and unnatural. Twist was nice, though. Uh, yeah, I mean that's fair. I mean it's 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 a movie, uh, not a movie, but it's a, it's a book that uh, takes a lot of risks. Um, where I don't think it's going to play, I guess you could say, to every taste, right? So where you mentioned you you weren't uh, weren't particularly impressed with the interactions. Uh, some people have said, you know, those were the most compelling parts. So it's 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 an interesting thing to, to do an alien book that's so different, uh, that's so off-brand in a lot of ways. Um, but then, yeah, that final kind of hat trick is putting it all together with, with the twist. Um, it, it's interesting how it played, it played out uh, amongst fans. Trusty Milkshake asks, what would you ask Ridley Scott if you saw him on a New York City subway car? <laughs> How much change would you like, sir? Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, this is the Canadian keep everybody happy argument. This is AJ White. Well, no, I mean, uh, I, I I love Phalanx. I mean, I, 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 I disagree, but... Uh, I acknowledge that it doesn't work for everybody. Simple as that. Goshiba says, have you or will you review the Zula Hendrix Defiance Saga? Uh, yeah, I, I've covered it a little bit. I've talked about uh, Zula's backstory a little bit. Uh, another book that I've been meaning to read, it's uh, Prototype, which is Zula's own story, um, which I was reading, uh, but then uh, Infiltrator came along. Ah, i got to read Infiltrator. I want to want to read it before everyone else basically um so i kind of put a pause on that so i'm about halfway through it uh derek moore another derek spelled correctly too do you have any neca alien figures love your channel thank you derek uh i do i have a few i have uh the big chap i have the dog alien the runner and i have the newborn and I have uh, some of the runner accessories, like the, you know, Spike and the Queen queen Facehugger, or Queen Chestburster, I should say, and, and the Royal uh, Facehugger. Uh, I think that's about it. And I have some other NECA figures, too. I have uh, all my favorite uh, killers. I have uh, Frey Krueger, I have Michael Myers, I have Jason Voorhees, and I have Leatherface. So th those are, that's the extent of my NECA figures. O three one one USMC veteran says, I just wanted to let you know, sub for life. I watch your videos at night, and you have me looking over my shoulders sometimes. Just a suggestion. You should try and narrate a creepypasta. That might be fun. Uh, you know, maybe I could, I don't know, find one that incorporates alien kind of stuff to it. That, that could be interesting to do. Serpent Knight says, would you ever do an overview of Dan O'Bannon's early work, Dark Star? Dark Star? Absolutely, I would. Um, that's something worth doing, I think, because you watch it and you can definitely see, well, as, as, as mentioned earlier, it was kind of like the comedy version of Alien in a lot of ways. So uh, absolutely kind of doing maybe a comparison uh, between Dark Star and Alien. Uh, that's something I would like to do. 
Austin Wilcutt says, uh, do you think the Predator face in AVP was poorly done without Stan Winston? Um, in, in a way, but I mean, you know what? It, I don't quite know what it is, but no Predator, even with Stan Winston in the second film, uh, none of them ever really felt the same or as good as that first Predator. In the original film, there's something. It felt very organic. Uh, the rest kind of, I don't know, seemed plasticky, kind of uh, obvious special effects. Where the original Predator, whatever they did, however they did it, it just didn't. Uh, it it stood on its own in in a really spectacular way. I think. Um, Aaron says, which originator do you prefer, Egg Morphing or the Queen? As badass as she is, do you feel like the queen grounds the alien too much towards the familiar? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a risk that we, we get into by making them basically too much like insects. like a, Maybe it's like an ant hive. Bees, man. Bees have hives. Um, I mean, the kind of the, the, the answer that I'm, I'm forced to give, um, which is something that, you know, we, we get into a little bit in in kind of the extended universe, or actually in, in, a, in the uh, novelization of Alien 3, uh, where the egg morphing is possible, though it's usually only in the absence of Queen. So both are acceptable, both work, I think. Um, that's a conversation that Ripley has uh, with, with Dylan in, in one of the scenes that uh, never made it to the movie, but w was in the novelization. Um, personally, uh, I, I like the queen. I like the concept of the queen. I do. I mean, it's, it's become a staple just as much as Big Chat, in a way. I mean, in a lot of ways, uh, the, the queen is the star of Aliens, right? Uh, the second film. And, well, he, he did back into the corner in certain ways, and he did ground it in, in some other ways. I mean, just look at what's on the screen. I mean, it's it's incredible. Rivercraft, uh, a super chat. Have spent many many evenings editing wedding weddings to your channel. Loads of road trips as well. Thank you. Keep it up. Thank you so much, Rivercraft, for your super chat. You're very generous, and I'm very grateful uh, for for your support. Um, I love editing. I, I spend many hours editing myself, editing these videos, so I know what, uh, what an experience it can be and how, you know, whatever's with you at the time, it's, you know, it's a comfort. So I'm, I'm very honored to be part of that uh, comfort, part of that ritual, um, and, and I thank you. And, and of course I will keep it up. I love doing these videos. Mac Wade says, what is your favorite individual predator? Well, again, I'll have to go with the uh, the Jungle Hunter from, from the original film. Just I, I love the aesthetic of it. I love its kind of general uh, attitude. It's, it's, it's method. I think it's, it's still the one to beat. Paul Nichols says, hi from Scotland, Alien Theory. What do you think of Ridley Scott's chances of another alien film in the franchise? He's in his 80s now, after all. I love the channel, by the way. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, uh, he, he's in his 80s, but I mean, he's working like a guy in his 20s, right? I mean, he's never not working, it seems. He always has something going on. A new movie or uh, his TV show, Raised by Wolves. Um... I honestly wouldn't put it past him that he'd be able to do another, but it's just a matter of if that's what the studio wants, if if, if that's what the audience wants. So it's it's hard to say, but I mean, definitely, if anyone deserves a retirement, it's Ridley Scott. I mean, the guy's been working, you know, 
like crazy since the 70s. So uh, it's, it's our benefit that he's continuing to work. Idol Moss says, peace out. Thanks for the work. Thank you for joining, Idol Moss. Uh, Mega Sniper 117 says, would you rather live life as a predator or an alien? I don't know. I think predators are more, you know, closer to humans. So I would say predator. MacWay says, I like Ahab from Fire and Stone and Life and Death. Ahab, like Captain Ahab, absolutely. Yeah, I I can see that. Victor Velmont mentions the, uh, the milk, the android blood milk. Lance Henriksen drank that spoiled milk for a death scene really well. Yeah, I mean, milk under hot studio lights, that's just a recipe for disaster. Scott Stegbauer says, would you ever consider organizing some game nights? Sierra AVP games were phenomenal, and I even like the more recent Sega AVP game, despite its flaws. Uh, maybe, maybe. Yeah, if I were to start with something, it might actually be Alien Trilogy. That might be the one I would start with. Um, then maybe AVP. Unfortunately, AVP 2 is hard to come by. I mean, you can get AVP on Steam for like a nickel, right? So... Uh, AVP2, unfortunately, I don't know why, uh, it's it's just uh, hard harder to find. Even though I do have the original disc, I still, I kept my boxes from those games. So I, you know, cherished them so much, uh, but pff, I, it would, wouldn't work on, you know, any 2021 computer. Mikey Flipper says, thank, Mickey Flipper says, thank you so much for your channel, Alien Theory. Always look forward to what you put out. Happy 426 Day. I'm going to... Popped up there. I'm going to watch Prometheus now. Excellent choice. Yeah, I think I might uh, watch uh, Alien Coven uh, when I'm done here. That's kind of what I'm feeling in the mood for. That's the good thing about the Alien films. They're, they're, there's one for every mood, I think. And I know, I know, not everyone's crazy about uh, Covenant, but uh, I like it. Matthew Klazik says, if you were to start another non-AVP fan channel, what do you think you would base it on? Uh, I sort of did, and, and I sort of got sidetracked and, and didn't really follow through as, as much as I wanted to. Uh, I, I was doing... I, well, it's still up. Uh, there's a channel that I've sort of started somewhat contribute to uh, called uh, Channel KRGR, which is uh, devoted to Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy Krueger, because I love those movies. I uh, devoted to horror movies in general, you know, like... Uh, uh, Jason, Michael Myers, and uh, you know, Chucky. I love Chucky too. I, I love all those horror movies from you know the eighties. They're they're fantastic. So that's what I would do. I, I wish you know I just kind of uh, ha had all the time in the world and could devote as much to a channel like that as I have to to the Alien Theory channel. But uh, you know, it, it, it does take a lot of time to 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 put in certain videos. So unfortunately, you know. Uh, I won't have like daily videos or anything like that. I, I have to kind of plan them out a little bit, edit them, and just get things, you know, the way the way I see fit, I guess. Um, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, Miguel Corona, the Batman vs. Alien video was one of the greatest things I saw on I ever saw on YouTube. Uh, I was blown away by any movie I've seen in the last five years. Thank you very much. This is high praise. It's, it's very flattering. Thank you. 
Robbie Grant, hello from Toronto. Yes, Toronto. Uh, looking forward to more Beyond the Earth War stories. Summer is here at Ontario. <laughs> Summer is here at Ontario, please. Oh, that's great. Oh, Summer in Ontario. Chris here from England. Love to show in the spirit of each of the first four Alien movies having a different pair of directorial hands. Who is a director you'd like to tackle in Alien 5? Ooh, that's an interesting one. That's a good question. And I'm actually not quite sure. Let me think about this for just a second. Um, well, people have mentioned, you know, uh, uh, Guillermo del Toro, but he's, he's established, um, you know, I think they just they got to get someone who's a little bit newer. A little bit uh, not quite established. That's hard to say. So I, I have to kind of think back to maybe like just uh, a directorial debut that someone did uh, of, of late, and you know nothing, nothing unfortunately really comes to mind. But uh, I, I I wouldn't be able to, to say for sure. Unfortunately, I wish I could come up with a better answer for you. Um, so unfortunately. Catherine Kruger says, I was asked if I was related to Freddy Krueger, and I haven't seen A Nightmare on Elm Street yet. Um, well, the spelling's different. That's fine. Uh, Austin Wilcott says, what do you think of the Hellraiser series? Uh, I like it. I like, well, up to the first four. Uh, even though, yeah, I know, uh, what is it, the fifth one or sixth one uh, has Lance Henriksen, which is pretty cool. Uh, I think the first four are the most pure um, and not not a lot of people are crazy about four but I think it has its moments but definitely the first two I mean that's a good double bill in, in you know like a similar way like you watch alien and aliens back to back uh, Hellraiser 1 Hellraiser 2 back to back that's a great experience it's an epic experience of horror and macabre and psychosexual insanity J.A. Warrior says Lawrence Fowler would be a good choice for an Alien 5. See, I'm, I'm not uh, not familiar with Lawrence Fowler. Maybe he's done something that has stood out, but I couldn't say. Is Amanda from Alien Isolation Canyon? She does come off as way too lucky for her role. Uh, in her game to be canonical. Uh, well, Amanda Ripley, as Ripley's daughter, uh, is canon. But uh, yeah, I mean, her story, I mean, unless I miss something otherwise, it is canon. Tech 49 says, alien and aliens go together like peaches and cream. They certainly do. Alan Riddle says, I read that uh, the makeup applied to Robert England's skin left the poor man with some dermatological damage. Uh, dermatological damage? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about that, because I know he got in a car accident, because I read his biography, and I met him once in, a, in a, a convention, and I had him sign my book. It was great. I put it in front of him. He's like, my book! I was like, you're Freddy. <laughs> He's like, yeah! Um... I know he got in a car accident and he was friends with Mark Hamill and he told him, hey, you got to go to a plastic surgeon. Don't go to the hospital. Um, so maybe that contributed to it, but maybe at some point with one of the movies it kind of melted into him. I, I wouldn't say that's, you know, completely out of possibilities, I guess. Is he says, man, isn't lucky she's a Ripley. Yeah, damn right. She's a Ripley. Ligula Germanicus says Starship Troopers was better than Aliens. Who's with me? Where's the kick button? Can I kick him out? Click. Kick. Blocked. Banned. No, I'm just kidding. Chrome Dome and Mega says the Cube movies were interesting. I like how they brought the last movie tying into the first. Yeah, I think those are Canadian uh, movies as well. Uh, I, I haven't seen actually any of the sequels, but I did see the first Cube because that was a big deal at the time. I mean, especially as someone who is Canadian, they, they you know, were very proud of the production. Uh, they were very, 
uh, supportive of it and, and advertising and, and getting it some some play. So yeah, it's quite the good film. But yeah, I mean, with with the Alien series, it's it is really kind of a choose your, choose your own adventure uh, canon kind of thing. I mean, nothing's been too firmly established. Like no, well, I mean, in some ways, yes, in some ways, no. But uh, so far, I mean, everything seems to be on the table. Where we haven't quite gotten to that area yet, where. An actual movie came out that, like you know, disregarded the other movies, which maybe Blomkamp's movie would have done. Uh, so that's hard to say. So th that brings up a whole, whole different uh, uh, bag of worms if if we were to have gotten that movie. But uh, who knows? Who knows? But. Uh, you know what, it's, it's, it's been so much fun, but I do think I, I'm going to have to uh, leave for today. It's It's been a really fun Alien, and I'm, I'm glad all you guys have been here with me talking about Aliens and, and geeking out over it. Maybe I should do this more often, because it has been quite some some time since my last uh, stream, right? I mean, it's probably been a year or two since I streamed. Um, it, it's been very fun, and it's it's been kind of breakneck topic per topic um dan spencer says happy alien day everyone heading to bed listening to theory vid keep up the great work thank you dan spencer happy alien day uh and and happy alien day to you all uh thank you so very much for joining me today uh i hope we'll do it again sometime maybe maybe a lot sooner than that I mean, maybe i'll have to come up with some ideas and base them around this but this has been fun today maybe we'll see together to uh, see each other again uh some other time soon and uh Stay frosty.